trains. They've been the backbone of Britain for nearly 200 years. First Great Western runs the most complex fleet in the UK. There's the right way, there's the wrong way, and there's the railway. Operating on an iconic network. Just stand by so we can get rid of this train. Thank you. Coping with the crowds. It's going to be a long night for these <laughs> And keeping the trains on track. Panic over. Panic over. We're all good to go. There's an army of drivers, engineers and workers fighting to keep this huge train set on track during a devastating winter. Braving the elements. This is unprecedented what's happening at the moment. It's the kind of thing you tell the grandkids about. And battling the backlash. I wish we could turn the tap off in the sky. This gets worse and worse and there's no end in sight. You just don't know what you're going to be doing next. Come hell or high water. Charlie, shut up. Hey! Coming up, there's a ruckus at the races. Gets a bit scary on Friday. There's a new look on the platforms at Cheltenham Spa. You can't find any silly hat anywhere, though. Come back. And it's too close for comfort for some train drivers. Each year, the Great Western Railway carries 97 million travellers between its 276 stations. Yeah, it could be delayed, obviously. Tra trains are subject to delay at the moment. Where are you trying to get to? Rail workers are under pressure 24 hours of each day to keep trains moving and passengers happy. Any passengers for Taunton? But there are certain days in the railway calendar where all are pushed to their limits. The Cheltenham Festival is no exception. Each year, this four-day horse racing extravaganza attracts over 200,000 people and 60,000 travel by train. Let the fun begin, then. At Cheltenham Spa Station, manager Richard's preparing for the arrival of the race-going hordes. This is the hard slog. This is the physical work. We got 500 crowd control barriers. We got all manner of signage, etc., that we have to put in. It's hard work, you know. It can be 15, 16 hour days for the likes of myself and the guys that help me out. In all honesty, when the event starts, that's actually almost the fun bit. Richard and his team are constructing a queuing system to funnel up to 4,000 passengers a day onto buses that will take them to the race course. Please, yourself, we're not allowed to use the toilet. Who? You've got the police. They're right there now, let's see. There's a public order offence of people seeing other people going to the toilet. Oh, dear Lord. I went in there to hut to say, oh, you're committing offence. It's the exposure. Yeah, it's the yeah, to exposure. I mean, what I was thinking was, is get, like, just get a, a buy a shower curtain and then just pin it along here. That ain't never going to stay on there. You know, you know what they'll be doing, they'll be ripping it off. Later in the night, when people have had yeah, a lot yeah. of drink, the gents will be flashing themselves about and had everyone standing in the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's going to cause grief for us. No, I know. I must admit, when I saw him on the back of the lorry, I said, what the... shut the front door. What about if I get an agency member of staff with a sheet? Well, you've got the Harris fence in here. Richard, you've we got the Harris fence here. It only needs some black plastic. Over Sorry. Yeah, no. If it goes pear-shaped and the, and the service goes tango uniform, then you get people that are stuck here, and of course, they've all had a beer, and from someone that's got a peanut bladder like myself, they start breaking the barriers and going across when we've got 70 buses trying to bark up. Yes, sir. So, you couldn't make that up. No. <laughs> Racing fans travel to Cheltenham by train from across the UK, but the lion's share come from Paddington, the Great Western's London terminus. A lot of extra people going to the races. During the event, four special services a day leave the station, carrying up to 8,000 racing fans. So it's all hands on deck. It's a nice week. It's a different week. So, it's good. Southern. Southern. ABC towards the rear of the train, first class towards the front. Yes! 
It's day one of the festival, and at Cheltenham Station, the first of many race-goers are pouring off trains and filtering through the barrier system and onto the buses. But as the trickle becomes a flood, there's a problem. Good job. Where are you going, mate? No, you have to go this way. Every, everybody's this way. Every, people going through this way should only be going through if they're going to the betting shop or the pub. Don't let anyone through here. This is, this is the exception rather than the rule. They just stood back and let everybody through. So that's a good start. Yeah. Give it another half hour, 40 minutes, they start missing races. So it'll tail off. It should tail off now, hopefully. How's it going? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Yeah, with the morning rush over, Richard needs to catch up with Dave in charge of loading yeah. the buses. It's almost a thousand over them last year. Is there? It's quite a have lot. You got, have you got a total? I've got a total so far of. Uh, I guessed about 3,000. 4,000. 5,338. 5,338 we've shifted so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave, thanks. I'll see you later, yeah. With the last race finishing at 5.15, the 5,000 racing fans are soon pouring back into the station, eager to get home. Reading we're going for. 17.58 is the direct one. OK. Can ask a question? Yes, sir. I thought it was 39. Who said wants to go to Gloucester? I'm trying to keep an eye on who's getting on track. We're getting on the wrong trains and everything. To get to Reading... Well, why have we, why have we got the gates open then? The gates have been left open, allowing too many people at once onto the platform. It's now too dangerous for a train to leave. Just go along and just help get everyone at the top back in for me. Guys, I don't want you together. I need you spread out, yeah? Making sure everyone's doing it. As passengers continue to jockey for position on the trains, despite the extra services, some are still not satisfied. When you've got an event like Cheltenham, which is going to be much more than the normal, you need to put on more carriages. Buses are arriving thick and fast, and a relentless stream of racegoers are flooding into the station. There's some room down here as well, mind. All queuing for the same door. Get on this one, so don't get... All right, don't get on this one. But 12 hours into a gruelling shift, the worst is yet to come. The people who had lots of drink have not yet turned up. And then that's when it starts to get a bit more interesting. Are you a proper police? Yes. Yes, I am. It'll get worse as the week goes on. Just sit down and sober up, and then you'll be able to get your train. I'm sorry. Right. I, I keep my eye on you. I am right. Oh, uh, no, 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 you're not getting on a train. You have to wait for a bit to sober up, all right? This is how it differs from the likes of Glastonbury and Reading Festival and all that. It's a, it's a different kind of crowd, man. As the last bus comes in from the race course, it's a dash for the stragglers to catch the final train. And after a 16-hour shift, Day one is finally over for Richard and his team. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, just like to say thank you to you all for all your help. It's been a really good night. Do you want a hug? No. <laughs> I want a pillow. I want a, I want a shower and I want a pillow. <laughs> oh. Coming up, there's a new toy in the battle against landslip. It's not safe to get people on the surface right in the middle, even on ropes. Our little helicopter drones have been brilliant. Follow and me. all bets are off for day two of Cheltenham races. I win this thing. Mary, I win everything. I'm rich. Workers on the Great Western Network are carrying out the biggest repair job in its nearly 200 year history. At Dawlish in Devon, a 100-metre section of the main line has been destroyed in a violent storm, severing the South West's rail link to the rest of the country. 
A 300-strong orange army of engineers are being pushed to their limits. Working 24 hours a day in all weathers, the pressure is on to restore the railway in record time. It's a massive responsibility. It's long hours, very hard work. Not everything is going right, but what we do, we find out what's gone wrong, we fix it. Project manager Tom is responsible for the whole repair. And with only two weeks to go before the line reopens, he's meeting his team for a progress update. All the precast sections have been landed front and back and bolted into place. Yeah. Uh, the train's just arrived at the far end of the hole this afternoon and we're in the process of starting to backfill with the ballast. Is that a 10 end. unit? That's a 10 unit, unit train oh, okay, at the far yeah. end. Uh, we're literally just filling up one small hole at the far end there on the drainage connection. Is this the final pump then now? This is the final pump, yeah. We're, we're on the final pause now. We'll be, by tomorrow morning, we'll be finished. Sound well done, looks good. So, Wicked. A lot looks of progress, good. mate. Well done, thank you. So. There's a lot of works to fix the outer wall, because there's a walkway there. We've got uh, parapet walls, about half a mile of them gone. We've put in the precast concrete unit, which almost form the channel for the railway. We've now got to get the ballast in, and there's a great big train ready to uh, lift that stone in. Then we've got to get the track the railway tracks back in, so it's a real big challenge. But it's all about getting the first train through. But the reopening of the line could be under threat. A crack has appeared in the sandstone cliffs two miles down the line from Dawlish. The cliff face is threatening to give way and engulf the tracks. Tom and the team need to find a solution. This is one of the critical areas of concern. It is a big challenge. We're now basically trying to induce the landslip down onto the railway and then put all that slip material into the sea so we've got a safe, stable slope ready for the first train. With time against them, Tom's called in the help of specialist fire crews to try to blast off as much material as possible. Adding a lot of water to it increases the weight of the soil, trying to give it a bit of a shock in a way. So it's a bit like an avalanche, so we can get long-reach excavators in to start getting material down onto the beach and they're using a specialised remote control camera to relay live images of the cliff face. You get to the top by the, uh, the tension crack at the back. Our little helicopter drones have been brilliant to allow us to get really good quality pictures and videos close up to the landslip. It's not safe to get people on the surface right in the middle, even on ropes. Coming straight out to this, you can see the railway line and keeping that top line. When we started pumping, we literally had two six-inch pumps coming across the top yeah. and the water was flying down those gullies. So it you know, might be a bit of pumped water forming it. The plan seems to be working, but now they have only two weeks to excavate and clear up 25,000 tonnes of soil and rubble. Whilst Tom's diggers deal with the landslip, Back down the track at Dawlish, 700 metres of ballast washed away in the storms is being relayed. And this time, they're taking no chances. What we discovered on those storms in February, that there was a tremendous amount of ballast that was washed over onto the roadway, damaged a lot of vehicles, etc. So um, we are currently bonding all the ballast. So all the ballast will be, once it's finished, will be all glued and secured. Just give you an example here now. If you see this um, portion here, hasn't been glued, and that's how loose it normally is. This bit has. You can't move it. The salt water that comes across here, it still allows it to percolate down through, but it won't wash it out. Not only was the line breached, but the storms destroyed Dawlish Station, Tom's last port of call. Right, how's it going? Well, we've done the canopies on both sides. Yeah. Last day for the roofers today. Good stuff. All the lights are done. Yeah. They've got new LED lights. As you can see, the electricians are coming through. Yeah. With their new stainless steel ducting. Yeah. All the painting on this side's done. Yeah. And how about the copers and the magma boards? Are they looking good? Obviously, on the platform, all the copers are now complete. Yeah. All the boards are down. Yeah. We've got the mastic joints to do. Yeah. Hand railing continuing today, hopefully, be finished tomorrow. Yeah. And then it's start clearing up. Whilst the clock's ticking for Tom and his Orange Army to reconnect the southwest with the rest of the country, for other rail workers on the network, another race is on. It's Ladies' Day, day two of the Cheltenham Festival, an excuse for female racegoers to parade high fashion and extreme hats. And at Cheltenham Station, ritzy racegoers are pouring off trains and onto buses to head to the event. 
The train was rather busy today. We struggled to find a seat, but we got one to have a lovely glass of Prosecco on the way up here. It's actually lovely because you can drink on the trains here. <laughs> we will have a go today. Yeah, a little bit. We'll have a go. Try and win some money for the wedding yeah. and that. Yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> Whatever the jockeys are wearing, I'm like, I won't go for that one. <laughs> But not all journeys are going smoothly. Okay, it started off at uh, ten past nine in Nottingham. Bought my friend's hat um, because she came up from Windsor, which was no problem. Put it on the top shelf of the uh, above us on the seat. Got here, saw her all excited, and then I went, her hat, where is her hat? <laughs> Apart from the fact that there's also some of her paperwork in which she needs for the uh, American Embassy on Friday. So I need to get a visa, so I've just started a new job as cabin crew, so... Uh, so yes. Mary's hat and vital documents have been left on a Cardiff-bound train and it's down to competence manager Phil to try to get them back. We're just still waiting for a call back from uh, Gloucester at the moment, so they're generally good, they're pretty good, so they should find it and then uh, keep this lot happy, otherwise mine, I'm dead. <laughs> Fingers crossed, it makes some kind of return somewhere around here. <laughs> otherwise, I won't be going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the races and buy her a new hat because it's my fault. As Mary waits, the final race goers are arriving. Last year I was chasing around three or four trains looking for iPhones and things because you always get one person every day that will let something on a train. Here comes the train now, so fingers crossed it's on there. It should be, they said it is. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks a lot. You've got it. <laughs> ah, it's got it on! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find any silly hat anywhere, though. Come back. <laughs> no. You're welcome. I'll take the prize tag off. <laughs> Yay! Your paperwork, Thank my you. bag, we're off to the races. <laughs> <Cheerio>. <laughs> Thank you. As the afternoon races progress, there's a lull at the station. But it's not long before a stampede of race goers return. To the front, more people for Bristol, please. And this evening, it's down to dispatcher Jerry to keep the passengers and the trains moving. Between the seats, if someone has stopped, keep them moving. Between the seats, open that door. It opens. It's amazing. Walk between the seats. Crystal, run, please, run. Go on, beat your horses. At least you're going to be a winner. Go on, squeeze it. Go on, go get it. Get personal. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Really good day, thoroughly enjoyed it. I win the thing. Mary, I win everything. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm happy. The best, and I didn't the have the best fillies I've seen today. Oh. I've had three winners. Beautiful women, beautiful day. And it's not just the ladies who have had a great day. It uh, seems the gents have too. We're trying to get a 10 to 8 train. Missed it, so we got in the pub down the road. And obviously, it's not worked out very well for some people. It might be the switch. You will. Well, my friend went missing, so I went to find him. I tripped over and landed on my face. Because I thought, I thought he'd been drinking too much, and I ended up knocking my teeth out. And but in all fairness, like all the horses you bet on today, they all fell. I've had a really good day, and it's just been ruined because I went looking for my mate. <laughs> I should have left him, I'd have been fine. With the last train gone, all that's left for Jerry to do is tidy up and deal with the last minute stragglers. Shut that, sir. I can't move it. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Coming up, you can't please them all at customer relations. But there were smelly people next to her in first class. <laughs> oh and there's drama on the Gatwick train. Barriers were down for one of the crossings and uh, a gentleman decided to go to the cross in front of me. If I didn't blow the horn, I probably would have hit him. Reading Station is the largest interchange on the Great Western Railway, connecting to over 250 destinations on the network. A well-travelled route is the Reading to Gatwick journey, used by commuters and travellers alike. Morning all. Right, I'm going to collect my equipment. Morning, how are you? Morning, Jay. How are you? Living the dream every day. Five, five, nine, six. And champion of the route is train conductor Jamil. First journey of the day, we're going to be going up towards Gatwick. So here we are at the train. Wonderful unit. Time to do some safety checks. Today, Jamil and driver Gary will travel the route four times before the end of their shift. It's fairly new. I don't know how long it's been. It's been about a year, something like that. Yeah. I think this is a DJ. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you aboard this 0524 First Great Western service. My name is Jay, I'm your onboard conductor today. I'll be seeing you through all the way up to and including Gatswick Airport. And if you're on the wrong service, all the way back to Reading as well. If you look towards the window right now, you will see a wonderful reflection of yourself. Please don't do your makeup in this because it will smudge if we go over a bump. Morning. You want to get there? That's lovely, thank you much. Morning, check tickets of rail passes, please. That is lovely, thank you. Thank you much. This is my most favourite route. Because it's fast and you get to know people here. So it's quite interesting. The first leg to Gatwick goes smoothly. But as the rush hour kicks in, the return journey could be a different story. It was quite quiet here today. The platform staff are saying it's very quiet at the moment. Oh, so should be exciting anyway. Living the dream every day as we do. I can't contain myself. Morning. That is a wonderful thing. How much? It's going to be £9.70, yeah? The printer's just decided to randomly disconnect itself. It's one of those weird mysteries of life, but it actually works. Thank you very much. Jamil may have a knack with the ticket machine, but only halfway through the return journey to Reading, there's a bigger problem. It looks like we have an issue with the signal at the moment. The driver's now going to call up the signal. Uh, he'll get permission to actually pass the signal at Danger as it's known, which is uh, on red. We should be on the move. We've just done that, so now we're on the move again. Another delay, unfortunately. So, we're getting there, slowly but surely. We're going to be delayed, yeah. We will be now. Because we have had four months now of delays. Stop it with that bloody red light going nowhere. Yeah, I apologise. The faulty signal has been causing problems for some time. And I'm to here. Have you actually asked? Four months of this. Four months. There's nothing we can do. But you feel the person's frustration. That's the worst thing about it. Thank you very much for helping. OK. You're trying to be on their side and they're having a go at you and you're sort of scratching your head going, yeah, I know where you're coming from, but really it's... You just want to give them a hug, don't you? Frustrated customers are one thing, but there are some things you can never prepare for. The driver has just called me. We've had a near miss at Chilworth. It basically means the train's nearly hit somebody at Chilworth. The barriers were down for one of the crossings and... Uh... A gentleman decided to go across the cross in front of me. So, close call, nearly. Well, I'm, it's a near miss, nearly hit him. If I didn't blow the horn, I probably would have hit him. I don't know, maybe it's complacency or something, uh, but they just like to sort of run straight across and uh, obviously the uh, driver spotted this one, obviously. And the only reason I see him because he had a beige trench coat on and I see the trench coat flap and I thought it was like a big bag or something on the barrier. And it's only when I looked across I realised it was a person. I mean, touch will have never hit anybody yet, but you never know. Lucky man. Trespassers on the tracks are all too common. 
In the past five years, the UK's railways have seen nearly 500 injuries due to trespass and 270 deaths. A 400-tonne train travelling at over 100 miles an hour can take up to a mile to make an emergency stop, making the tracks a perilous shortcut. No one was hurt this time, but due to the faulty signal, after leaving Gatwick, Jamil's train is behind schedule. Currently we are about 15 minutes late, and this obviously is an issue for, well, not only us, but for other train companies, um, and obviously for the passengers as well. But on every journey, on any day, there's always time to get to know what his passengers think of the service. Now, you take where we're going, ready. Yeah. The, the, the connection to the margin there is seven minutes, right? Yeah. yeah you know as well as I do that that yeah. was very tight and not ideal before they doubled the station to <laughs> a size where it is now visible from space. <laughs> but because the managers are on planet Zog, they're not even in the same solar system. It's ridiculous at seven minutes. To now, be honest I'll tell you that, I do not have any confidence in railway management at all. Absolutely not. When it comes to running a sensible public transport system in the public interest, I like sat the lot and start again. It's a fine collection of, of chips in prison. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long time coming, but we shall shortly be arriving into Reading, where this service finally terminates. Would like to apologise for this delay today, and again, if it has had a knock-on effect onto your next connection, then please... See me on the platform. I'm the big guy with a beard with a first great western jacket on. My next journey now will be back to Gatwick. It'll be fast there, fast back. It will be an off-peak train, so that'll be um, slightly less stressful, to say the least. Time to take a break. Let's do this. Rail workers on the front line must be prepared for any challenge their shift throws at them. But moving beyond the platforms, there's a whole army of workers also ready to deal with the travelling public. <laughs> right. We pray that our trains will run without any disruptions. That saves us an awful lot of aggravation from angry, upset customers. And beginning a peak time shift at Paddington Station in London is customer sales advisor Patrick. Paddington has an annual footfall of over 50 million people, made up of commuters, day trippers, and international visitors. I've got about 10 different apps on my phone for language things, so if I get a bit rusty, I just use them to keep me uh, refreshed. German, Spanish, Italian, French, oh, there's a whole load of them on there. And next customer, please. I need um, the ticket for uh, reading and return. Merci beaucoup et bon voyage. Merci. Thank you. <laughs> Mon pleasure. Au revoir. It was my second language at school, so I'm a bit rusty, but luckily I can speak a bit of about three or four languages, which helps me sort of uh, muddle my way through with customers who don't have very good grasp of English. Day return. Ida Volta Oji, £17.70, please. Where from? Brazil. That's why I said Ida Volta Oji and he never responded. You weren't listening. <laughs> I called a Dominioca. We went to Obrigado, bon voyage. Ciao, ciao. Next, please, window down to your left. Bonde, is it Brazilian? I'm Brazilian. Yeah, I'm from this area. Yeah, I'm from Yeah, and there's a million of hours in Mato Grosso for one month. Rondonopolis, Cuiabá, Campo Grande, and Benita Pantanal. Ah, yeah, Jacare, Boa Carne. Carton and receipt. <laughs> Patrick's Portuguese skills blossomed during a relationship with a Brazilian girlfriend. Yeah, I went out to Brazil in 2009 to propose to her mum and dad. Said to them, Kia casa caminha sua filha, faz favor, means I want to marry your daughter, demanding. They both said yes, came back, then she um, sort of... Um, Changed their tune on me. When things go wrong, that's what we're here for. We get paid good money to try and deal with the problems the best we can. Um, I've got a problem here. My tickets, I put for return, but I only got printed out that return bit, not the, the out we go bit. I'm hoping that it will be that it's a printer failure. <laughs> the printer may or may not have done its job properly. What they can do is give tickets to their friends and expect us just to give them a freebie, not realising we've got this little kitty here to back us up, like, to say, well, sorry, your tickets did come out. 
Unfortunately, the gentleman has left the ticket behind. Alas, sir, it's as I thought. It was a successful completion on that machine. But how do I clean that back That's again? what I'm just going to get you the paperwork, but they'll refund that, no problem. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. You take care. Whew, got out of that one lightly. Next customer down to the window on your left, please. But there are those on the network whose job it is to deal with any problem head on. On the phones to our customers from 7 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. Near the western end of the main line in Plymouth, customer relations manager Jason is also starting a busy shift. For our customers, they, they might be able to look at our website, but they've actually talked to us here. We can actually you know, have a conversation with them, so there's a bit of humanity on the other end of the phone, really. We see the detail. You can look at a train and cancel it, and you know that those 400 people are going to be delayed an hour, whatever. 50 have got some personal issue that it's a big problem for them. Where were they come from? St Austin, was it? Par. Par. Par, yeah. And Nicole had a couple who were struggling with our replacement bus service. Um, and when they got to Plymouth, Nicole put them in a taxi. Yeah. So they can get to their hospital appointment they've been waiting six months for. Um, it's well done, you. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, so that was good. Nice start to the morning. Yes, isn't it? His team deal with 6,500 letters, emails and phone calls each week. I can log a complaint for you, but it does take this long to process if that's something you'd like me to do. But now there's a new form of passenger communication. Social media has sort of represented a shift in the way people contact us. We used to get phone calls from people, so if they were late to work, they phone us up when they got to work, and they normally have calmed down a little bit, and they, they tell us their dissatisfaction. Now, of course, they can tweet that my train's five minutes late, now it's ten minutes late, now it's 15 minutes late, now my sandwich doesn't taste very nice, and, and on they go. When we first went on social media, we thought we'd see the number of calls and emails drop, um, but actually we haven't. They've stayed the same, and we've just had all these extra complaints coming in through Twitter. In London, the social media team are getting started under the watchful eye of Joanna. Another one. He was on the 447 from Bristol to Paddington. He just had to get off and freeze his tits off a bit more at Maidenhead. If there's disruption, then pretty much every other tweet get quite bad swearing. People aren't shy. They're not shy. <laughs> Usually, we don't really mean it. I always get that little warm glow when you go back and say sorry to them, and then they're like, oh, wasn't aimed at you, no. Oh, hang on, he spoke too soon. Oh, no. <laughs> He's come back. <laughs> Top-level shithousing from FGW. I don't even know what that means. Oh, all right, well, never mind. We tried. <laughs> There's a broken-down train at okay. the Marsh area. Have you put a message out? I'm doing that now. Great. I know a lot of people just think, you know, oh, you're not doing much, you're just on social media. But actually, we can make quite a big difference to some people, and that's what I like to do. It's not all about late trains, though. I mean, we, you know, we get asked a lot, a lot of different questions. I've just been asked if I'm hot, which is flattering, I guess. <laughs> but a bit weird. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned when I'm doing this, I'm first Great Western. And that's not particularly attractive. <laughs> There's a few sceptics about social media as though, well, it's not really, you know, it's nice and fluffy, but even the hardest sceptic has seen how good it's been. Um, and, yeah, we, you know, I think everyone's sold on it now. But plenty of passengers still get in touch the old-fashioned way. Nice wrap-up of the call, Lynn. <laughs> what was it about? But there were smelly people next to her in first class. Oh my God, that's terrible. And one of them yawned and didn't cover his mouth. <laughs> really? She really said that? <laughs> oh dear. Maybe she have an announcement. Please refrain from yawning, but if you must do, cover your mouth for God's sake. <laughs> Coming up. There's protest on the platforms as the Cheltenham Festival draws to a close. The train manager wants to give me hassle. He can hassle me, but the train will not go until I'm ready. And don't forget about your chance to win a once-in-a-lifetime rail adventure through the Canadian Rockies. You and a friend could be travelling in style on the Rocky Mountaineer Grand Rail Circle Tour, taking in Banff, Lake Louise and Whistler. For your chance to win this amazing prize worth over £10,000, text TRAIN to 85545 or call 0904 16 15 555 or send your name and phone number to TRAIN, P.O. Box 7557, Derby, D-E-1, 0NP. For rules, go to channel5.com stroke win.
It's Gold Cup Day at Cheltenham Races, the final and by far the busiest of the whole event. Yeah, we're at the top of the Cheltenham queue. Cheers, Charlie. At Paddington Station, manager Ian and his team are loading and dispatching thousands of racegoers onto the special Cheltenham services. But things aren't going as smoothly as Ian would like. 8.54 arrivals forming are 918, so we're gonna have a, it's gonna be tight. The morning's busiest service, the 918, is running late. We're gonna have to prep it, clean it, board it, dispatch it. Ten minutes. Easy. <laughs> Time now. It's about nine minutes past, so it's gonna be tight. There are hundreds of seats to ticket and reserve, so Ian gets stuck in. Sorted. The train may be prepped, but there's now only three minutes left to board the passengers. ABC at the front, folks, please. Hi, guys. That's it, sir, yep. Charlie, shut him up. And some race goers have let it go down to the wire. No! When you go to an airport, everybody's there four hours before. With a train, it's like 40 seconds, get on. They understand it. But Ian's hard work has paid off. Uh, we're about a minute down, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. I was pleased with that. Ah, uh, this one's going to be busy, though. A lot of people turning up late today. <laughs> Over the course of the festival, champagne and beer are loaded and served on board the special trains from sunup to sundown. Good atmosphere. Everybody's up for a laugh. Drinking at 9.30 in the morning, <laughs> which is all good. Customer host Debbie is stocking up the 9.56 for her final journey of the week. Last day of four long days. We'll get other people coming on it, Reading and Swindon, and then by the time we get to Cheltenham, there won't be no room anywhere stood round here. And then that's it. Party train then. <laughs> Working alongside Debbie is her daughter, Sean. Every single seat is full. We are going to be busy. But they're all happy, so it's fine. I have got champagne, Prosecco, Guinness, Guinness, get Guinness. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. That's 3.50 now, please. Did you get on the other day? Is it a good day? Yeah, we come out the right side. Oh, that's good. That's good. You haven't got the two pound by any chance, have you? I've got no change whatsoever. It's party all the way. Here we are, standing in a first class carriage, no seats. We've been 140 quid a ticket and there aren't seats, so you know. But are we, are we, are we crying? No. No. Did you say sugar with both the coffees? No sugar. No sugar. I had a great Tuesday, second race, 37 to 1, 10 quid. So the entertainment this is down here. <laughs> it's really, really, really busy. Um, everyone seems in good spirits. But the champagne's flying out, so um, it must be Gold Cup Day. Oh. <laughs> Two more stops, Gloucester and Cheltenham, and that's it. There you go, guys. That's very kind of Then the tidy off. So when the train goes back in service from Cheltenham back to Paddington, it'd be pristine, it'd be like... You know, it's like, like it not, never happened. Yeah, like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun. And nice working with Mum. Now I don't have to go home and see her. <laughs> no, 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 yes. She'll have to go visit me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the train pulls into Cheltenham, all that's left for the onboard team is the big clear up. This is the hard bit. It's the floor. Do you know, it's just, people want things on the floor and there's bins that put up in the bins. I don't understand. Jackpot. <coughs> How much do you remember, Chuck? £615. Oh my God. As the afternoon of races draws to a close, it's the final hurdle for the team at Cheltenham Spa Station. They're psyching themselves up for the last and most notorious night of the whole event. 
compared to the other days, um, this is definitely ten times more busy. Weather's a little bit better, a bit warmer all day, so more people have come out, and it's Friday. Outside the station, the Revenue Protection Team are out in force. I've, I've explained, explained to you... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding, but you can't travel on a Group C3 with, like, three people. So if you need to buy, you need to buy two tickets now to, to travel, or you, can, or you can travel, gentlemen. The option's yours. So you I need to, to buy... I want to I live in so Essex. £58 for two people. I think we are. Where, sorry? What was that? I, just I thought you said. No, no, no. I thought you said. What did you hit, I thought you said. Stick up my ass. I'm just having a surgery. Have a good day. You definitely did the serum. I had a group saver, but the third person didn't travel with me, so I had to buy a fourth ticket. I don't know the answer. So, but it's a good day. It's a fantastic day. I'll do it again. I'll do it every year, so. Just, I can't handle them. We didn't win anything, but it's a good day out. Stood right by the finish line, it was fantastic yeah, to watch it sort of come in. Yeah, not the one we backed, unfortunately. <laughs> Typical us. <laughs> I won £4.78. <laughs> By nine o'clock, the station platforms are at breaking point with drunken fans, and the transport police are taking action. As train dispatcher, it's crucial that Jerry's on high alert. The trains go when I'm ready. The train manager wants to give me hassle, he can hassle me, but the train will not go until I'm ready, and it's safe. They're singing, they're not fighting. So fingers crossed they carry on singing. Gets a bit scary on Friday. We've got our lines of communication for getting people on, getting people off, and it's working. At the very front, but you won't get in there, sweet. Just get back where you were. No, it's terrifying back there. It's it's ter like an anus. There's no room. Get in down there, or you're not getting off. Sweetheart, down there or not off. <laughs> But just a couple of hours later, and the station's clear, and Jerry can finally unwind. This is what I like. You know, it's finished. No more people. Yeah, it's good. Next time on the railway, passengers are left stranded at Western Supermare. You're not going to tell I, I me what to, you want to tell. To I'm telling you, yeah, no. OK, no, you listen to me. Hope is running out at Paddington Lost and Found. That is so awful. I really feel for her, you know, I can see in her face how upset she is. And there's a time to celebrate at Dawlish as the line finally reopens after two months' wait. We've had the Orange Army, let's hear it for them. <laughs> We've been on quite a journey over the last few months. It's great to have the railway back. The Railway First Great Western is back on Monday at 8 for the final episode of the series. Sweaty Palm driving tomorrow night at 8 on Channel 5 as the new series of Ice Road Truckers continues. Next tonight, bitter rivalry all from the pages of our history books in new series Britain's Bloodiest Dynasty. 